Yeah, welcome, uh, class. This is uh, 14th day of June 2017. Uh, I'm reaching you from UNESCO Paris, and uh, uh, today's uh, seminar is going to be on different topics that uh, are on computing that are outstanding. Uh, we're going to be having uh, presentations by John Sin, uh, Family Day on uh, Interrupt. Uh, Solomon Abba will also be talking about Interrupt. Madam Woke will be talking about uh, contemporary uh, issues. Is that what you're going to be talking about, ma'am? No, sir. Artificial intelligence. Okay, artificial, and art importance in education. okay artificial intelligence. Okay, maybe we will take uh, Johnson first, and then take Madam Uchenna next, and then we'll go, go in that direction. So, uh, if you are set, uh, family day, are you set? Yes, sir. Okay, please go ahead. Good evening, class. Yes, good evening. Mm. Good evening, sir. Yeah. I'm presenting interrupts in the computing process. Yeah. Uh, let's start right away by going to slide two. And on slide two, you will see a lady that is that was uh, she is so busy with whatever she is doing and every other things around her calling for attention. And we can look at that and say every other thing's trying to call, get our attention are interrupts. Yep. And checking the dictionary meaning of interrupt, you will see that he's also saying that it is making something that is, on, I mean, putting a kind of a stop to something that is in on, on a continuous process, activity or event that is on a continuous process. And we can see that it is that thing, those events in life also that is brought into computing that we also are relating with despite the fact that these are inanimate animate things and that would bring us to i mean that will intimate us more with what we are talking about in interrupt in the computing process let's go to slide three where i have the introduction and in, in the introduction i said the tax of the cpu is to process data and follow instructions you just go on and process data without anything interrupting it. But the moment something comes, what it does is through the controller, you quickly shift its attention to whatever task that is beckoning to his attention. And I said there are two methods of dealing with events that comes or poke uh, 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 the CPU. And this is poly. And the second is the use of interrupt. Let's go to like for what is polling polling the state of continuous monitoring is known as polling what happened with polling is this that when the cpu is when, whenever the cpu is uh, uh, idle it goes around asking what do to i mean asking those peripheral devices that are attached to it and asking them do you have anything for me do you have anything for me there do you have anything for me there and right there if there is any one of them that has anything they give to him and you see that why the and the need for interrupt interrupt has really come to really see the day on what polling is losing it comes and it saves the time of processing so uh, uh, in fact there was a, uh, an analogy a real time analogy uh, okay slide six interrupt versus polling that interrupt is like a storekeeper, a shopkeeper that ev that is there in his shop, and everybody comes to him, and uh, they come to him, and they ask him, "Oh, what do you have?" He quickly attend to people that wants his attention. Why polling is like a salesperson that goes about sell his product, and then uh, on slide seven, types and uh, uh, sources of interrupt. We have the three types: we have the hardware, software, and the processor. You will see on that same slide, I, I, I try to bring in what happened with the three uh, sources of interrupt. I said uh, uh, when it has to do with the hardware, you see that it sends an interrupt request to the device, to the processor. Why when it is with the processor, you will see the, uh, 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 you will see the flow. Like when it is with the interrupt request, the hardware, you move down and you move to process odd thread execution, processor saves thread state, processor executes interrupt. And, uh, let's go to 
with slide eight, hardware interrupt. I have explained that with what happened with the flow of uh, of processing. Let's go to slide slide nine, software interrupt. Then slide ten, categorizing interrupt. We have interrupt. Interrupt can be categorized into these different types: maskable interrupt. These are interrupt that <coughs> may be ignored by setting a bit in an interrupt mask, uh, mask register. Why the second one is non-maskable interrupt? These are interrupt that, that cannot be ignored. They are like oh, something that is waiting on on, on the processor and said you just need to attend to me now. And the uh, uh, and the processor or uh, the scheduler does not have uh, because it doesn't have a bit mask. It doesn't have a choice. It does have to attend to it. Let's move to slide eleven. We talk about in inter processor interrupt. Then we talk about software interrupt, spurious in interrupt. Attention on that spurious inter interrupt. A hardware interrupt that is unwanted. They are typically gener generated by system conditions such as electrical interference. Once the light just goes off or, uh, uh, or on an interrupt line or through incorrectly designed hardware. Let's move to slide 12. Interrupt service routine slash interrupt. Handler, how does it? How does the CPU? How does it? How, how does it attend to any interrupt that yeah, that comes up to him? It is through interrupt interrupt that come. We need to note that every interrupt has its own interrupt. Uh, uh, I mean, service routine. And on slide thirteen, you will see we we try to look at things that were, I mean that have been explained before. That when you look at the flow without any interrupt interruption you will see that processing just flow like that but the moment an interrupt comes in while he was processing on the main the moment an interrupt comes in he just goes and through the interrupt service routine he, he, he called for it i mean the processor called for okay, that okay you and have one more minute interrupt service routine. yeah you have one more minute uh, he attempts to the interrupt uh, uh, this thing and then go to slide 14, advantages and disadvantages. Yes, interrupt also has its advantages. It is at own advantage, and then it will also have its own disadvantage. Efficient, better than polling. You know, I explained that polling wastes a whole number of minutes, processing minutes, asking around. And then for interrupt also, it, uh, it enhances multitasking. But the disadvantage is they can occur randomly and when it occur randomly like that uh, it is not going to help the processing uh, uh, and the processor at all okay, and, uh, random, random now. requires additional hardware sometimes yeah then, uh, oh that's very good okay can we up upload him can we upload uh, very good well done um uh, so, very quick questions for him. Uh, Billy, are you there? Um, Mr. Fahamuide on slide, slide 11. When you, you mention interrupt processing, inter-processing interrupt, can you just throw more light on it? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Uche, Madam Uchena, question for him. Okay, he said something about having different types of interrupts. Is there something like a hierarchy? How does, how does the computer pick a particular one? Let's assume we have an interrupt from a software and another from a hardware. Yeah, yeah. Which one comes first? Yeah, good good question, good question. Uh, Jeremiah, do you have a question there? To ask, uh, is it possible for us to have both polling and interrupt uh, system in a particular uh, CPU? And the second question, uh, how has Core i7 been the latest uh, CPU? How has it deal with the function of the interrupt itself? Good question. Good question. Yeah, Solomon, do you have anything from you? My question is that uh, it may mention about two types of uh, interrupts. The interrupt itself and polling. Yes. Uh, that, uh, then I want to know, because uh, when Mr. Beleri, uh, Beleri, Presented, mention uh, other types of it, uh, interrupt, and now he's coming in with the uh, pulling. So I want to really know the, <laughs> the difference.
difference between <laughs> what Mr. Abile has uh, represented <laughs> before. Hey, no, so no and he told us about the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, no problem. He will answer you, but if you are listening carefully, they are the same types that it, they listed. And we just use a, he just use another slant, you know, to the matter of interrupt. So back to you, Johnson. Answer the questions very briskly. Uh, which, if there is an interrupt coming from the software or the hardware, which one does the which one does the CPU attend to? I think it has to do with the order of priority. Priority. There is what is called uh, 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 um, prioritizing. Now, to every interrupt routine, there is uh, uh, there is a, a priority, uh, like a priority number that is given, and which one one is higher and the other one is low. And okay. Don't waste time on that. You have answered that. Next question. Yes, next question. Yeah, okay, fine. So you can be uh, discussing with them outside class, all the other issues that they have challenges with. But uh, I think you've made a very impressive presentation and it complements the others, uh, the presentation by Billy, by Jeremiah and all of that. Uh, so together we have a well neat uh, presentation from all the sources on interrupts. Very well done. So we're moving on now to Madam Uchina Ugoke. Uh, then let's uh, uh, take our, let, let's look for our slide. When did you send, okay, I can find it now. You say you are presenting on what? Artificial intelligence. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's just load that one uh, and get it rolling. Yeah, that's it. Artificial intelligence. So, you know your time, and so you begin from now. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm presenting on artificial intelligence and its importance in education. So, I'm going directly to my second slide, Good. where I have the introduction. So, artificial intelligence is just the ability of the computer to begin to reason like an intelligent human being. Um, ability of the computer to mimic cognitive functions as as, that are associated with human mind, such as learning and problem solving. So when the computer is able to do things like this, it is termed artificial intelligence. So going down to my third slide, I am trying to link artificial intelligence and education. Good. So when we look at artificial intelligence and outside other sphere, at other spheres, not just education, we find out that great progress has been made there, but in Education, it's not as, not as fast as it is in other spheres. Like, I, I am a computer teacher and I know the, the challenges I have in education. When I think of what artificial intelligence can do for me as a teacher, I think it's, it's paling when compared to the what artificial intelligence has done in other spheres. Like, example, the Amazon and the UPS, where we have we really have drones that deliver packages. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you. W what school do you teach, and what uh, what class do you teach computer studies? I teach um, senior secondary school, and my school is at Ajegunle. Yeah. Like in, in yeah. No problem. No problem. School. You teach them computer studies. No data processing. Oh, is that a, is that a subject in the secondary school? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Data processing. Hmm. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Please carry on, madam. Okay, so I'm going to the next slide where yeah. I, I just started um, talking about the importance of artificial intelligence to education. So my first um, um, point is adapting educational software to students' needs. The, this particular um, point is something I'm very, very passionate about because I mean, you get to the classroom setting where you have um, different types of students, people that are fast learners, yes. slow learners, average learners and all that. So it's is it for me when, when I have um, um, something like a tutor that will help me um, with um, the student's performance, telling me if this particular student is an average student, if it's somebody that can assimilate what I'm, I'm teaching very fast or what have you. So I think it's a very, very important area of artificial intelligence in education. So I'm going to the next slide now where I have um, the second point, which is areas of improvement in courses can be point courses subject
yet now for me can be pointed out. So this particular point now is another good area that artificial intelligence can help in education. Most times I teach in class and while I'm teaching and I'm asking questions, they are all answering. And then when I give them, excuse me, when I give them assignments and they submit, maybe half of the class fills this particular assignment. So it's obvious they didn't really, they didn't really understand the topic I was teaching. So artificial intelligence yeah. can tell me can tell me how to organize this um, topic to make them understand it, bring it down to their level. All right. So I'm going to the next point now, which is students getting additional support from AI tutors. In my school now, I am the only um, um, data processing teacher, computer teacher we have in the school. I'm marking over 1,000 scripts. Each time they write test and exam, it affects my delivery. Sometimes there was a, a time I had a problem and there was a particular class I didn't enter for half of the time. It's not that easy. So when I have at artificial intelligence tutors helping me out with this, it's easier for me to be able to um, um, handle all the classes I have. Yeah. So I'm going quickly to the next slide, which is information retrieval and analysis. I believe we can all relate to this. When I was in the university, when I get, if, I, if we're giving things like this to maybe a particular assignment to work on, you have to sometimes to travel to other states, go to state libraries to look for textbooks to get the information you're looking for and all that. But this time around, you can sit at the comfort of your home, retrieve information, check if this is what you really want. If it's not it, you don't it. Go to another website, look for whatever you want, and it helps you uh, um, work on whatever you have at a very short period of time when compared to what it was a few years back. So the fifth point is the learning process can be made less intimidating. I can totally relate to this particular point. I'm not the kind of person that would, this presentation I'm doing now, I wouldn't have done it in my undergraduate years. I have always, I don't want to be put on the spot. So if a child comes into the class and asks me a question, I might know the answer to this question, or I might not know the answer to this question. But because I'm just called upon to work on that, there's this attitude of wanting to shy away. You don't want the students to look at you, you don't want the teacher to see that, oh, I, I, I'm not getting it right, you're just afraid. So this artificial intelligence can help students um, study in a judgment-free um, area, so to speak. You can be interacting with your computer, just like I said, now it's, it's easier for me to do this presentation, probably because I have calmly used the system to look for information I need and read through it over and over. So I'm not worried about making a wrong presentation and all that. So going quickly to the next slide, which is the sixth slide now. The, this particular topic I'm talking about, the point is artificial intelligence power data. Now, I'm going to use what we have been doing in last week now to explain this. Now, you go to, um, you pay online, you um, do your registration online. It wasn't like this before. That is another area where artificial intelligence has helped um, in education now. You do a lot of things online. Data is collected online. Analysis of this data you, you have two more minutes. You have two more minutes, quickly. madam. Alright. Analysis of this data can be done quickly because it's done um, online and all that. So I'm going quickly to the next slide, which is the seventh slide. Then artificial intelligence change changes the role of teachers. Now, I am a facilitator, I am a teacher, I am what a few. If I have artificial intelligence in my school, I might limit my job to that of a facilitator. The uh, artificial intelligence tutors can help me with um, teaching the, the students, presenting their topics and, 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 and all that. My job is to provide something that is called a human interaction with my students. So, and that is all I have to say. The final slide, I have my references where I got my yeah. uh, presentations from. Very Thank good, you. very good. Very good. Well done, Madam uh, Uchenna. Yes, can we ask uh, uh, questions across the class, across the table? Uh, Gwile, any question from you? Yes, well done, Mrs. Ukwe. Yeah, by the uh, way, by the way, Gwile, you are the first to present on artificial intelligence, and it was a classic. And uh, she has come from a different direction. I mean, uh, you, you, you have looked at artificial intelligence in a very nice a generic framework where you looked at the you, you look at you looked at the mechanics of it 
uh, which is the heart of the matter, more or less. Uh, what uh, Ugo K has done is, is to look at, if you like, and quote now, the human angle, uh, how the application how it can be applied, you know, to uh, everyday setting, especially in the classroom. So, ask your question. Yes. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Kukwe, my question is... Um, yes. Uh, uh, look at the topic. That is, I'm going to talk you from it. At the end of the don't you think that if artificial intelligence is good, will it be a threat to your job? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Johnson. Uh, Jeremiah. Yeah, I, I also wanted to add... To uh, the African context, artificial intelligence. How soon can we use of this that, that she discussed about? Okay, thank you, Jeremiah. Any question for her? Uh, Solomon Abam, any question for her? Uh, uh, I, would, I, I would rather make a, a contribution, sir. Better, better, like that, yes. Go ahead, make the contribution. Okay, uh, I want to ask her. Uh, the last uh, 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 person that asked based on that, we are already using artificial intelligence, both at home and even in the office. And that was why she was talking about automation. Any job that is done automatically, that job is referred to as artificial intelligence. That is why now we pay online. We don't even bother how these processes are undergoing. Today, you a child pick up a game at home, you see a computer initializing uh, the steps of the game, like Ludo and football, all those stuff. All those applications are artificial intelligence, sir. So that's what I don't want to keep things. Okay, that's fine. Um, before I yield to uh, Madam Wuchina, let me continue from where I stopped. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, don't let's look at artificial intelligence in its very rudimentary, primordial level. Uh, the way Solomon and maybe you, you know, uh, 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 have looked at it. Artificial intelligence, you know, has to do with some mathematical mechanical model, which uh, at the end of a long day, if I your first three slides uh, made a reference, at the end of a long day, it's like wanting to empower uh, mechanical devices with human capacities. So, indeed, I, I thought at some point uh, you mentioned, I think Billy, you mentioned it in his own presentation, that it's a dreary world where you have artificial intelligence coming full steam. When artificial intelligence comes full steam, the human race is doomed. Uh, in fact, in a, in a lecture I gave for, I'm a fellow of the Science Associ Association of Nigeria, in the lecture I gave at the 50th annual conference, I did list what we call the grand challenges facing humanity today. It's not climate change. It's not, there are two challenges. One is to have a meteor come down from space and hit the planet. If it does so, if it's a bigger meteor or if it's a bigger heavenly body, it will lead to the complete annihilation of the human race, just like it did 50 million years ago when we were dinosaurs and then you had this uh, uh, meteor hit the earth and the, 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 the collateral effect led to the entire planet being blanketed by dust. And so we didn't have, uh, uh, we didn't have uh, what is it, uh, sun to get the, the, the trees that this uh, Dinosaurs were eaten to grow. I mean, to to grow. Yes, and so they died. So that one is a is a is a worry for humanity. The second worry is artificial artificial intelligence. When after a little while, we will just get these intelligent machines to now face us. We, we are the creators of the intelligent in, of, of these machines. They would they would then face us. So we got to look at that side of the equation. You know, the title of your presentation is Artificial Intelligence in Education, and you got it 100%. Because all you did was to now focus on those elements, those rudimentary elements of artificial intelligence. You left out all those models, which Billy, you know, emphasized in his own, which is quite nice. Because 
as I said, we are looking at the same elephant from different sides, and together we are describing the same elephant called artificial intelligence. So I'm, I'm very happy, very proud of you all. So if you want to respond very quickly to the question that Mila you raised, uh, you have the floor. Okay, Mila, um, you asked if um, it's a threat to my job. In the whole of Tolu complex, I don't think we have up to four computer teachers in the whole of Tolu complex. So we've not had enough teachers already. So it's not even a threat. If they're going to, if the government can be able to uh, bring in um, help through artificial intelligence, you and I know that they cannot give us enough going with the trend of events in the government now, the way they uh, um, respond to the needs of the masses. So I don't think it's a threat to my job now, but in a couple of years' time, when we have a huge um, um, inflow, just like um, Prof has said, it might be a threat to my job. Probably by then I should be retiring and they know how to come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, madam, you got it. You got it. Very well done. Very well done. Again, thank you for a very Sorry, nice sir, presentation. I, I, I really no, no, it's, it's late now. Uh, we're going to move on to another presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, maybe you are the one to present. Oh. Okay, so Solomon, you have the floor to make your presentation. What are you presenting on? I'm about to talk about interrupt. Okay, you are about to talk about it. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, go ahead, though. Uh -huh. Good evening, class. Uh, I want to talk about interrupt. Okay, by the way, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. By the way, today, hold, hold on, hold on. By the way, today is uh, still 14th of June, 2017, and uh, uh, I'm reaching the class from UNESCO Paris, uh, where I'm on mission for Nigeria, and uh, the class members are in different locations in, in Nigeria. Uh, it's 11, 10 p.m. by my own watch here. I'm one hour ahead of the class. Uh, the uh, Lagos time or Nigerian time will be 10, min to, uh, 10 minutes after after 10. So uh, it's a nice world, a world of technology, a world, <laughs> let me use uh, as a, this, a world of artificial intelligence. Uh, I hope the intelligence will not take my job <laughs> as a teacher. <laughs> Okay, please go ahead, uh, uh, Solomon. Okay, thank you, sir. I want to start by looking at operating system. We call it OS. Which slide are you operating on? System. Which slide are you on? Slide two. Slide two. Operating system is an event-driven mechanism that executes only when an interrupt, trap, or system call occurs. Why is it an event-driven design? Operating system cannot trust users' processes. User processes may be budding or malicious. User processes crash should not affect operating system. My friend, operating yeah, system my friend, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have just agreed yes, that it's not for you to be leading everything here. Uh, yes, be, yes, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. What is meaning of buggy? Is it buggy? But it's buggy. What's the meaning? Big grammar. What's the meaning? I'm sure you are not too yes, sure of sir. that. I'm, I'm sure you are not too sure of the, of the meaning of that word. But no, go, sir. On, go on, go on. The next word I, I say, I say, or oh, malicious. Uh, uh, malicious. <laughs> okay, you, you, you yes. won. You beat me there. Go ahead, yes. <laughs> so I'm moving to slide three. Yes. Where we have event types. Then we are, we said, I am saying that uh, interrupt arise by hardware or programs to get operating system attention. And we have two types of interrupts. We have hardware interrupts raised by external hardware devices and we have software interrupts raised by users' programs. Then we have Another part of event which is exceptions, which is due to what illegal operations. I'm moving to slide four, sir. I mean, uh, slide um, six. In slide six, I have here computing processes. And what are they? We say most of most of the time, 
a computer will wait for you to do something like clicking a mouse keyboard actions to interpret which can be interpreted by the operating system routines and the cpu will check the application to determine the response then when you go to slide seven we have four parts of computing process we have the input processing storage and output the last option there is telling us that you run through this through the program going through these steps that i've just mentioned let's get to slide eight in slide eight i try to look at that word process we have been talking about computing process what is a process in computing a process is an instance of a computer program that is being executed we also have some process states which are not going to go deep down because of time let's go to slide 10 sir yep we're there. We look at process actions and what are they we have create delete create and delete suspend and resume process synchronization and we have process communication then on that same slide i have what is interrupt and i am I'm, I'm saying that an interrupt is a dynamic event that needs prompt attention from the cpu like my mr johnson was saying an interrupt is a point where the cpu is being alerted that a particular device need a, a service and that is where interrupt comes in and uh, we have a uh, first need to post operating system and secondly for the operating system to wait for events now slide 12 sir yes. slide 12 i have possible solution and that solution came in using what we call pooling a situation where the uh, cp or the processor do not wait for that inter uh, interruption to come in itself goes around to know the hardware that needed a particular service and give that service and that to reduce the problems of it breaking 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 processes then that is one of them and another place of uh, another instance for solving this issue is using what we call dual mode of operation uh, in dual mode we are talking about interrupt handling involving a privileged operation hardware protection and from there sir i am moving to slide 15 yeah where i said there is need for protection that one of it is that kernel is privileged user applications are untrusted security we have malicious problem programs read and write data we have liabilities for the program crash machines and then we must protect kernel from users problem i mean applications then finally hardware mechanism for protections we have two model of uh, operation under that we have all operation in kernel mode non-privileged operation in user mode well-defined interface to transit between modes then we have memory protection example base and limit registers kernel set base and limit before creating processes timer interruption kernel periodically get back control and these are the things that we must do in order to prevent uh, frequent occurrence of interrupts so that the computing processes would go as planned this is all i have sir thank you thank you well done solomon except that i didn't see your last slide to be your references yeah i'm sure you will get that one in at some point uh very well done what you have said complements what the others have presented on interrupts so let's just quickly take some questions uh jeremiah are you still there okay madam uchena so from what 
what you said you said we have exceptions and interrupt. What's the difference between exception and an interrupt? Okay, so please make a note of that. Uh Famu you do. Uh, I heard him talk about pulling also. Does pulling have any disadvantage? Okay, as pulling any disadvantage. Uh, Bile, last one. Yes, uh, I just want to say well done to Mr. Solomon. Yes. Because I want to put out a particular thing on slide 10. Slide 10, where he was talking about the uh, first need to put operating system. I think there is an omission or a mistake there. Uh, that CPU jump comes to the bootstrapping code at fixed memory location, or what does it mean by like M location? Okay, thank you very much. Solomon, uh, address the questions very quickly. Uh, the first one says, uh, what is the difference between an interrupt and uh, uh, an exception? And I, I mentioned it categorically that interrupt is partly raised by the hardware, and the other side it is raised by user program. An exception is where a, a user or uh, the hardware involved in an illegal operation. That is an exception. But when there is legal operation, which of course, as a result of signifying or signaling the CPU that this device needs an attention for servicing, that is an interrupt. So when it is illegal operation, it is an exception. Okay. So, uh, next uh, question. Johnson asked about pulling. Is pulling a disadvantage? Pulling, not, 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 not pulling. Pulling, pull, pulling, pull. Pulling? Yes. I would say it is not an, a, a disadvantage. That is what the hardware does in order to limit that prompt at, uh, call for attention. Since the operate, uh, the, 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 I mean, uh, the CPU is the, 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 the one doing the job. Instead of you being reminded, or I mean, instead of it being reminded by something else, it now does the job so that it will continue proce I mean, uh, carrying out the execution serially as it's supposed to be so for me i feel that uh, it is not a, a disadvantage okay uh thank you solomon uh, thank you all uh, that brings us to the end of this uh, seminar and uh, i'm sure you all have had a long day like i have uh, i've been in meetings uh, all day and uh, but i found this seminar to be quite interesting and exciting uh, just one second. Uh, let me now bring the class to a close and to uh, wish you well. We'll not be having a class tomorrow because I'm going to be very busy with the advanced statistics class. So uh, we're going to see you on Monday. We're going to have yes observation. Go ahead, Billy. Us, we have learned a lot from you, and in any areas that we have uh, come short of what we have learned, we pray that uh, you continue to be a guy and for... <laughs> uh, thank and you. And lastly, sir, yes. I, was in the, I was in the PhD class where you are trying to give them a, uh, advice towards the examination. Yes. So, based on all this presentation that we have presented, mm -hmm. we want a kind of advice uh, towards our examination of money, or what would I call it? Uh, area of concentration. Sir. Yeah, there's something called content validity. Content validity is uh, of a test. Is the spread of that test over the topics taught. So our uh, uh, exam on basic com EST 874, basic computer engineering one, will cover all the areas that we have learned. All the areas. Uh, so don't leave, don't 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 think about any area of concentration. Even the PhD class, I, I, I mentioned to them, we would have everything. Everything will be covered. You were in class last week Saturday, weren't you? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. When I gave them a test, that test co co covered everything. So the exam is going to cover everything. It's going to it's going to be 
a three hour exam for them for advanced statistics. Three hours. Yeah, they are going to calculate and sweat. But you see, at the end of that day, at the end of the whole thing, they will be better for it. So for us in the class, just uh, read up everything and uh, <laughs> Uh, be ready to score your A because you are all A grade, A grade, A grade students. A grade students. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You very okay. much all right. So yes, take sir. care and uh, God bless. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Good night. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.